Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we have a series of disturbances over the next several days that's gonna bring multiple rounds of severe weather. Then a rapid warm up comes by the end of the week. So we're gonna break things down for you in this video over the next seven days so you can plan ahead and know what to expect. Good morning, everyone. How's it going out there? This is your Monday, May the 2nd update. Man, we got a lot to talk about in this video. So let's kind of delve into the details. May is a stormy month and it's a wet month for many. And you can follow along on the top left hand corner of the screen of the date, the time and date as we move through. Let's take a look at the setup for today because the Storm Prediction Center has in fact upgraded to a moderate risk for severe weather across the plains today into Oklahoma. Right here is kind of the bullseye. Around five o'clock in the afternoon, I think storms are gonna really start to explode along this boundary ahead of a strong cold front. So we do have a moderate risk and an enhanced risk over portions of Oklahoma and to Arkansas, southern portions of Kansas here into Missouri. And those will pinwheel down to the south and move southeast into the overnight hours bringing a squall line of severe weather. But today, one of the main setups is gonna be your very large hail potential from these, this setup. We've got a lot of extreme updrafts with this potential setup. And this hatched risk basically implies that that golf ball size hail or greater. And we saw a lot of that yesterday along this boundary here in West Texas. And some of those hailstones were up to four inches in diameter and so you could actually see some of that today with these updrafts potential cloud tops reaching over 50,000 feet at times has that potential in the atmosphere so yes it is a stay high alert uh, of this setup with large hail potential into southern portions of Kansas and Oklahoma going into uh, Missouri through portions of Arkansas here and then it will fade down with the hail threat as it pinwheels further south into portions of Texas and ex extends into portions of western uh, Tennessee but also a main concern is the tornado potential as well where they do have yet another hatched risk for tornadic activity and that not only can you see a few tornadoes in this area but also a few strong tornadoes so those EF2 type variety with cloud tops reaching up you know upwards to 50,000 feet today Yes, that definitely has that potential to create that very large hailstones and a strong strong tornado or two in this area. So I'm gonna be going live around five o'clock this afternoon to definitely keep you ahead of the storm so you can stay high alert and get all the watches and warnings well ahead so you can plan ahead and be in your safe zone to ride these storms out. But tomorrow along the cold front, that just pushes off into portions of Kentucky into portions of the Ohio Valley with a marginal to slight risk, not nearly as intense as what you're gonna be seeing today because there's gonna be a pretty strong cold front that's gonna be moving through on the backside of this system. But yet we have another disturbance that's gonna be moving in into this pretty much the same area is almost gonna be impacted today across Kansas into Oklahoma, into portions of Texas here with yet another enhanced risk for severe weather on the table with all three modes of severe weather definitely in store again for your Wednesday, May the 4th. And that continues to push off to the Southeast. And this is the day four risk guys. It's already an enhanced risk for severe weather across the portions of the Arklatex here portions of the deep south into the southeast here into western Tennessee and parts of uh, Kentucky here. So I expect this risk to expand as it gets a little bit closer in time. So let's take you through the overall setup for the next 60 hours on the composite reflectivity to kind of give you an idea of where the stronger storms could be and some of the snow. <laughs> That's the blue. That's some snow flying up here. But yeah, we have a pretty significant trough and we're gonna be seeing these a series of troughs that are gonna be coming off into the Pacific Northwest, pinwheeling across the country, bringing all that instability and play, but bringing some cooler temperatures underneath those troughs as well. So this morning, around nine o'clock here, uh, we've got some rain showers moving into portions of Washington and Oregon. And underneath that, at the higher elevations, that blue is some snow flying. In fact, they do have some winter weather advisories up here into portions of Wyoming and to Nebraska. Some of these two to four inches today and could be some isolated spots of six inches of just kind of a heavy, wet snow up there. But all that instability that went through Texas 
uh, last night has now shifted and pushed through Texas. Now it's into portions of the Oklahoma area, into Kansas, as, much, as well as uh, Nebraska. But we do have a, a, a little disturbance that moved through into the Northeast as well, was bringing some sporadic showers for them. So let's kind of walk you through time and kind of take you through the day. And you can follow the time on the, on the upper up above my head there so as we walk you through time so you can see that snow snow really starting to crank up as we get into the afternoon hours but right around five six o'clock in the afternoon i do feel that low level jet is going to be catching up and that's where thunderstorms are going to be starting to explode up here to portions of southern uh, kansas here especially as you get into oklahoma these could be very large hail producers uh in its wake about out ahead of it there's that surface low kind of winding itself down and bringing some showers just to the north of there into missouri as well as into illinois here but as we go through the evening hours yeah it's going to be a nasty squall line guys along this squall line it could be a uh, tornadic you know you're you're talking about wind gusts of upwards to 70 if not 80 mile per hour potential is definitely not out of the question some strong strong tornadoes in its wake and definitely that large hail as we get through the evening hours and that pinwheels down to the southeast into your 10 o'clock time frame there's around midnight it will potentially cross over into portions of texas and it's going to be weakening as it does at, you know as it moves further south so yeah once it gets into portions of say north texas just like you saw last night with that rain into the overnight hours of especially in our northern areas uh, you know, picked up about two to four inches in parts of North Texas last night along the Red River there. And I think uh, some of those areas, those same areas are going to get hit tonight with this squall line moving through around the same time, like two o'clock in the morning. Again, then it, this will continue to push through into the uh, over, overnight hours. And by the time you wake up into your Tuesday morning, that cold front will be safely in place and bringing some sporadic showers into portions of uh, Wisconsin here into Michigan along the Great Lakes into you know portions of Illinois and in Indiana as well as Ohio here we're underneath that trough up here in Idaho we got snow <laughs> we still have snow flying into portions of Montana into Idaho as well as getting into portions of Wyoming so if we continue the clock and move it through in through time but yes again as we get into the heat of the afternoon we're starting to see a little bit more instability come into play a little bit more daytime heating that's going to kick off some of these storms into western Tennessee parts of Kentucky here southern portions of Indiana and Ohio could be on that strong to severe side as you get into the heat of the afternoon and that will continue to push through across into portions of the northeast going into your overnight hours on tuesday going into wednesday morning and yes we'll be looking at for yet another disturbance by the time we get it wake up on wednesday morning the fourth around nine o'clock in the morning we could be looking at more snow starting to fly into portions of wyoming as in the midsection of the country you have that underneath that trough We've got more instability with another pretty pretty high updraft potential into portions uh, as we get into again the, the the heat of the afternoon into your afternoon hours about uh, five o'clock in the afternoon storms stood start to erupt into portions of Kansas into Oklahoma again so that's where the other setup where the enhanced risk is already in place for your Wednesday time frame. So let's kind of expand the view and take a look at the North American view on these series of, of trough. This is, these are, this is your 500 millibars. And, and typically underneath these uh, kind of blue shaded areas, that's your, that's your you know, a little bit cooler conditions, your more unsettled conditions. Underneath these you know, highlighted you know, kind of yellows and the orange shaded areas, that is your a little bit more drier air. Uh, typically you have sinking air in that type of environment. So you have the cooler conditions with the blue and where you see the red here, that's your, your little bit higher temperatures and a lot, a lot of sinking air and a lot of drier air underneath that. So we walk you through time here and this is for today. So we have that series of troughs coming through portions of Kansas through Oklahoma uh, at ahead of that cold front. And then as we get into tomorrow, there's the instability under that trough into Illinois, into Indiana. We'll pinwheel down to the south into portions of Kentucky there. But yet we have another trough that's going to be diving in off off the off the Pacific Northwest 
that's going to be moving through the midsection of the country. So by the time we get into your Wednesday afternoon, that's going to be setting up over portions of Kansas into Oklahoma, back into Texas again. And then that will bring that other round of severe weather. And as we continue through time, going through your th uh, Thursday afternoon, that your day for a risk will be setting up over portions of the southeast again, out, out uh, in the warm sector, out ahead of that trough. Uh, so we can see the big trough in the midsection of the country bringing all that unsettled conditions. And that's where the severe threat is going to be still high for the next uh, several days to come. But as this moves through on the backside, we've got a pretty significant ridge that's going to be building into parts of California, building in parts of uh, the, the, the Four Corners region, especially going into Texas as you get into the weekend. But yet we have another pretty significant trough that's going to be diving in into portions of British Columbia here, into Alaska, back into portions of the Pacific Northwest with bringing much well below average temperature anomalies and more unsettled weather for them so that's into your friday time frame because yes as we go into your weekend you can see this massive ridge really starting to develop uh back behind it so it's going to be fairly warm weekend in the midsection of the country as we have developing a uh, ridge going to be taking place but on either side of it uh we've got unsettled weather that's going to be moving out of thursday heading into saturday and bringing all that some unsettled weather into portions of the tennessee valley shifting off into the south shifting off into the east coast there but yes we have that other trough that's going to be really building as we get into your you know your weekend time frame but man it's going to be a pretty warm weekend a, a warm mother's day for the midsection of the country but much colder and cooler conditions and more unsettled conditions by the time you get into mother's day for much of the of, of the west coast and yes with this developing trough that's going to be digging in of much much of the west coast i mean that's just kind of basically reloads the system out ahead of it where you got a developing ridge and then you got a trough on the back side so we'll we'll probably be talking about more severe weather you know as we get into uh, into next week time frame as well so let's take a look at the overall surface map so this is the the latest european model so we'll take you through the next uh, seven days or so to kind of give you an idea of of where the rain showers are going to be and where some of the snow is going to be flying and where you can just expect to see the sun <laughs> so as we walk you through time so we got that instability in the midsection of the country we talked about bringing that snow showers in parts of the nebraska there's that low pressure system for uh, as we get into you know the overnight time frame pulling through the central part of the u.s out ahead of that cold front that's gonna be moving through today there's that trough underneath here where we got all that unsettled weather and those cooler conditions is gonna be cold enough to snow into parts of wyoming into uh, idaho there on tuesday and that will shift off into the east coast with uh with uh, some a little bit more unsettled weather and some sporadic snow showers we have that developing trough that's gonna be digging into the midsection of the country with more with with a more kind of heavier snow and uh, light heavier snow moving into portions of the Rocky Mountains there Wednesday we got that other setup moving through parts of uh, uh, you know Oklahoma into Kansas pinwheeling back south into into Thursday and portions of the southeast we have yet a, again another ah! series of troughs that's going to be digging in off the off the Pacific Northwest with this with that low pressure system going to be that trough in the midsection of the country underneath that with underneath that trough we have these series of low pressures going to be moving through the ohio valley on on friday not severe stuff but still going to be bringing some unsettled weather as we look towards the weekend uh we have yet again our eyes will be up, up towards the pacific northwest into british columbia right off the coastline here some rain showers along the coast up in the higher elevations we're still going to be talking about snow because it's definitely going to be cold enough but in the midsection of the country, you can see these, these darker oranges here. That's that developing ridge is gonna be taking shape in the midsection of the country with well above average temperature anomalies, you know, as we move through your, your Mother's Day uh, weekend. And then yes, as we get into, you know, say next Monday timeframe, yes, we have a, that trough is gonna be really starting to dig in, bringing well below average temperature anomalies 
for the Pacific Northwest. So let's take a look at some of those temperatures, right? So here's here's the setup for today. So we have this we have the setup going into this afternoon, but underneath that, look at that. I mean, you can follow along in the the bottom bottom of the screen here. And here's the graph. This is what your your temperature anomalies are what you would typically see this time of year. So all the red shaded areas are anywhere from 10 to 15 upwards to 20 above average temperatures. So you start getting to these greens, that's about 10 degrees below average. You start getting to these purples, that's that's upwards to 20, if not 25 degrees below average. So that's why it's snowing. <laughs> that's why it's snowing at the portions of, of Nebraska here and the portions of Wyoming. So let's just follow along here as we move through. So you can see it's a fairly significant uh, cold front for May standards moving through the Central Plains, uh, you know, uh, on the back side of that severe weather that you're going to be seeing today. Uh, but as we move in through Tuesday, going into Wednesday, we've got that again, another trough that's going to be digging into the midsection of the country. Uh, but by the, by, by the time we get into Thursday, we have that ridge, right? So we have that pretty much pretty good ridge can be starting to develop off here into the desert southwest, parts of Cali California here. We're going to be a seed, a, a rapid warm up into portions of uh, Wyoming here, you know, Montana getting into Wyoming. And then we yet we have that other big warm up that's really going to be starting to really take shape. We've got a pretty significant ridge that's going to be building into the Four Corners regions and to Texas that's going to really extend all the way up into Canada. So these are well above average temperature anomalies of a good 15 to 20, if not upwards to 25 degrees above average temperatures at times. But I showed you that trough. So underneath that trough, that's where all the cooler conditions and the more unsettled conditions are going to be by the time we get into Saturday with all those, you know, five to 10 degrees below average. That's where the, underneath what a lot of that's going to be because it's going to be raining in this neck of the woods. But there's that surge on the back side as some of these going to be experiencing your first 100 degree heat in ports portions of Texas for the year as temperatures soar. They could be climbing as high as 102, possibly even 105 degrees as we get into your Saturday, especially probably into Sunday. But notice all the colder conditions with that significant trough that's gonna be digging in off the Pacific Northwest by the time we get into your Saturday, May the 7th time frame. That's your 10 to 15 degrees below average temperatures and more unsettled weather. And I actually think it just deepens and actually gets just a little bit colder <laughs> as we get into your Mother's Day time frame with those 20, if not 25 degrees below average in portions of Northern California into Nevada here at portions of Utah. But look at this, guys. <laughs> this is May. This is the second week of May by then for your Mother's Day. It's cold. It's actually pretty chilly. Going to be coming up in portions of Virginia, getting into Pennsylvania, along the coast here into Jersey, into Delaware. So <laughs> definitely be on the lookout for that as these series of troughs are going to be moving through. And, and as we take you expend all the way into Monday, yes, there's that rapid warm up that's going to be in the heart in the midsection of the country with these developing troughs on the either side, bringing below average temperatures from much of the Northeast by the time we get into next Monday. And of course, well below average temperatures as we go into next Monday for much of the West Coast. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Definitely stay tuned for live coverage for severe weather impacts across the plains starting about five o'clock this afternoon. Uh, definitely t catch me in the next update where I do daily videos on this channel. So if you hadn't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. So thanks for watching. I, so I appreciate you watching. And so catch me in the next update where I protect you before and after the storm.